The reason for doing this is there are a number of retailers who have corporate responsibility strategies in place which supposedly ensure farmers receive a sustainable milk price. However, the strategies of, of Morrisons, the Cooperative and Asda at the moment, and certainly after the 1st of August, won't even be paying dairy farmers their cost of production, which we estimate to be around 30 pence a litre. Well, the difference between the retailers I previously mentioned and Tesco, Sainsbury's, M&S and Waitrose is that that latter group of retailers, they do offer a milk price which covers cost of production. They have a pool of farmers who supply milk into their stores for, for, for liquid milk you see on, on the shelves with, with their own brand on and they pay those farmers according to a formula which ensures that at any given time they're covering the average cost of production of their pool of farmers. It's difficult to tell exactly because demand for milk fluctuates through the year, for instance at Christmas and Easter when people are drinking more. In Tesco they have a group of core farmers who all the milk they supply receives the cost of production price but they also have balancing farmers so they can increase production on that price as and when is needed. So 100% of Tesco's liquid milk is on a cost of production price. In Sainsbury's we estimate it to be between 85 and 90 percent and with M&S and Waitrose again we'd estimate it to be um, somewhere, somewhere around 90 percent. Well the question you could ask your milkman or your supermarket manager or whoever you're buying milk from is what are you or what's the business you're getting your milk from doing to ensure that dairy farmers receive a sustainable milk price? If the answer is they don't know then you need to think about shopping somewhere else or making sure they have that answer next time you have the conversation. There are a number of things you can do, but the first thing you can do is you can vote with your feet. You can make sure that when you do buy milk, it's from a supermarket or a retailer who has a strategy in place to ensure that dairy farmers receive a sustainable milk price. And the most sustainable milk price that we're aware of is one that at least covers a farmer's cost of production. You're absolutely right. Dairy processors have a responsibility to ensure that dairy farmers receive a sustainable milk price. If we don't have dairy farmers in the UK producing milk, then we won't have dairy processors to process it and we'll have no dairy industry going forwards. Without UK dairy farmers, we'll be looking at much higher milk prices on the shelf and potentially from herds with lower environmental credentials or lower welfare standards. The fact is, we need a sustainable UK dairy industry. So dairy processors should be doing their bit too to ensure that we have a sustainable dairy supply chain where dairy farmers can make a profit. While the cooperative has increased its milk price to farmers by 0.65 of a penny, on the back of the, the recent um, proposed price cuts. However, in that same period, the price their farmers receive has gone down by 3.7 pence a litre. So they're a long way short of covering the losses which farmers are making as a result of the price cuts by their chosen milk processor. The problem with the dairy sector is the contracts which exist between dairy farmers and dairy processors. Most farmers are tied into a contract with a duration of 12 months, so if they want to leave that contract and supply a different dairy processor, they have to give 12 months notice. At the same time, the price a farmer is paid is dictated to them at the discretion of the dairy processor, so the farmer has no say in the price setting process and they're tied to a contract and they're not allowed to supply milk to any other dairy processor. If you compare that to, say, a mobile phone contract, where you've got a contract for 12, 18 or 24 months, but within that period you at least know what you'll be paying. Dairy farmers aren't in that position and that's one of the reasons why we believe the, the market for milk at Farmgate is dysfunctional and we believe we need change in dairy contracts before we'll see better conditions for dairy farmers. For a dairy farmer, their utmost concern is the welfare of the cows. So the last thing any dairy farmer will allow to be compromised is the welfare of cattle. But that said, it's completely unsustainable for businesses to be operating at a loss of up to five pence a litre, as will be the case for some farmers after the 1st of August. But I think that the end result will be dairy farmers going out of business, and that's unsustainable, and we, and we can't have that. 
If you look on the NFU's website, we've got a number of letters and material that members of the public, farmers uh, and anyone else can use to either contact their MP, to contact a milk buyer, to contact a supermarket or posters which you can use. Um, you can put in your car, you can put on your house or you can use if you want to protest at a supermarket or, or uh, a milk processor's headquarters. But the NFU only supports peaceful and legal forms of protest. On our website you'll find guidance to the do's and don'ts of protesting and you'll also find material that, that you can use like posters and, and publicity material that you can use on a protest. But the bottom line is the NFU will only engage in, in and support peaceful local and legal forms of protest. Farmers need a, need a sustainable milk price to remain in business. A number of businesses aren't pulling their weight in ensuring that dairy farmers receive a sustainable milk price when they should be. The message to government is that we need regulation in the dairy sector to ensure that we have fair contracts and pressure must be brought to bear on dairy processors and retailers to reverse the recent price cuts which are going to do so much damage to our dairy industry.